or brightest young people come to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And when they come here, they are exposed at least to a worldview that sometimes is diametrically opposed to what we believe as Catholics. And if a young person is questioning their faith, it's our responsibility to give them an equally valid intellectual reason why their faith is valid. The mission of St. Paul's is to teach young people how to know, love, and serve Jesus Christ, to get them to have a prayer life that they can take with them into the parishes, to give them the intellectual ability to articulate a Catholic worldview into the marketplace of ideas. We get here and <laughs> they start moving me in and I'm crying and freaking out. And we went to 6 p.m. Mass by 7.30 that night. I was like, I'm good. This just, like that's the feeling, right? It's just this peace. My view of the church was a little bit influenced, I guess, just by the media. St. Paul's just made the church alive for me. Just through my involvement at St. Paul's, I, I made the decision to, uh, to apply to be a, a seminarian for the Diocese of Madison. I'm originally from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I'm the third of four children, and I always grew up in a, a Catholic home. Even though I thought that coming to Madison, I might lose my faith, it was really in Madison that Jesus really revealed himself to me in a deeper and more profound way. We at St. Paul's provide Newman dinners, Alpha Omega, meditations, special speaker series, all those kinds of things so that student leaders can invite their friends who no longer practice the faith into a very open and non-threatening environment. And so St. Paul's is a great place for these students to come to start to ask these deeper questions. Who am I? Where am I going? Is there a God? And if there is a God, then what does that mean for me? I got involved at St. Paul's about my freshman year in a Bible study. We'd read a passage and then discuss it. And it wasn't, I'd been to 12 years of Catholic school and it wasn't anything that I had experienced before. And I understand it enough to say, yes, this is something I believe, and this is why I believe it, and this is what I love about the Catholic Church. St. Paul's really gave me the tools I needed to help change. It was that Mass and the Holy Hour that I think we really liked the most and kind of got the most out of. And it was awesome that the church was able to offer that here on campus. And now that, now that I have a family and I understand my role as a Catholic father, um, I'm responsible not only for bringing these girls up to obey traffic laws and you know be good little girls, but I'm responsible for bringing them up in the faith. I remember one specific Alpha O, a couple of the wives of the workers here at St. Paul's, they came in and they talked about relationships centered on Christ. And one of the things that they had mentioned was that our bodies are temples and our bodies were made for God. And so that really gave me a new perspective on how I view relationships. The Quinonia retreat was just starting up and it was the first semester of my sophomore year. I wasn't too deep into my faith at this point and I was still putting schoolwork before everything. I go on Koinonia and it was a fantastic time. I still hope to be a doctor, but I really hope to be a nice, devout Catholic doctor. You know, the lessons that I've learned at St. Paul's and how to be a good Christian and a good Catholic and a good man are lifelong lessons. It's hard for people to go to church. It's hard for people, especially at the beginning of their life at college, to meet new people. Honestly, if it weren't for St. Paul's, I don't think I'd be a priest now. I, I don't know that I would have found my way in the world. I don't know that I would have found my vocation in the church if it weren't for the community at St. Paul's. I consider it a privilege to be a priest here at St. Paul's. We have a very energetic and competent staff. We are unified and together we have seen the blossoming of many students' lives in Christ. Now, none of this would be possible without the generous support of our alumni and benefactors. Therefore, I'm asking you if you have a heart for campus ministry, if you would like to see the new springtime of the church, the new evangelization that John Paul II called for, I am asking you to consider becoming a contributor to our annual fund. Together with your support, we can bring about a new springtime of the church. God bless you.